think that um, board members have free speech rights. You and your free speech, you just take them anywhere. And you always back up on them. You have free speech rights. We all do, but we all should board members. Not free speech as a board member, but free speech as maybe an American, but not free speech as a member of the board. You can't speak for me. Yeah. But when you speak to the board, you say, this is what the board wants to do. This is what the board wants to investigate. I don't want to do what you want to do. That's because that can sometimes your, your be the case. Is corrupt. But if I thought that there was something corrupt happening that the board was not addressing, I would not feel that I would needed to be constrained to not talk about it because you didn't think it needed to be talked so about. So what about the, the corruption, corrupt things yeah. that you do that the board does address that you have done? And you continue to do them and look at us with this smile and cheap face and still go on and do these negative things that reflect negativity, negative, reflect badly on this board. What about those things? Are you addressing those things also? Are you saying, because of this policy, I will not continue to say negative things, to do negative things, to go out of my way and do corruptive things? Because I don't feel that I have done things really? that are corrupt. Really? I even cannot, Even when there are things the board members have brought to your attention and said, this is not how we handle things as a board member? I you understand that, that the board and I have had their pieces of opinion. Okay. What about the public that have come to the board and say, you know, Dr. Behobiak has done this, that, and the other, and we would rather her not touch our children, grab our children, hold our children from us, or, you know, the, and we have said don't do it, or you, you know some of the things we've discussed that we publicly sanctioned you for, and, and you continue to do them? And I have people coming to me talking mm -hmm. about things that I have done that the board has criticized me for, for example, <coughs> taking students to the Natural History Museum after school with the written consent of their parents, that uh, people, is that it, the board it, has censured me for, is that the, and is people that the have come, is that the and consent people, form? Is that and the people consent? have come to me saying, that it was wonderful that I did that. Is that the consent form that you made out without the knowledge of the board and put us down there as the ones saying this is from us and we had no knowledge of your homemade <coughs> consent form? I did that not put, say that that, that was the from board, the board. I that, said that, that, the board, that was not a board function. That put the board that in this jeopardy. That something personal between you don't me want to, see, and You don't want to hear what students. someone else has to say. <laughs> Let's move on. Because this is going on all day and two is going on all day. And I'm not going through five more things. I'm just not going through Well, five fine. More. Let's, let's uh, Dr. put uh, this aside I'll, and I'm let's talking, discuss Dr. the Mahoyan. worst one. I'm talking. I'm sorry. I thought thank you, you, you were thank you. paused. If there are some questions that need to be asked, need to be answered more fully, give it to Ms. Andrews. Ms. Andrews will look it over and she said she will. And she'll bring us back. The thing. The, the item that I find most difficult here is the item that uh, you handed out at the June, I believe it was the June 23rd meeting. What are we talking says, about? Are we still talking about the policy? Uh, bu yeah. Policy, yes. Okay. Chapter 2, Administrative Organization slash Personnel, Evaluation of the Superintendent. I did not hand that out. Mm -hmm. It was Ms. Andrews. Yeah. She handed it to me, I handed it to us now. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. It thank came you so much. It's through Ms. Andrew to you and it's then... Your information okay. If well, no, you have a you question, excuse out. me, if you have a question about that, that should have been something you asked Ms. Andrews about before this meeting tonight. We were not here to go over 50 subjects. As we were told at the last meeting and the one to give there. out any discussion that we need, any issues that we had, give to Ms. Andrews so that we could talk about tonight. Now she has to come back another time to do it because we didn't do what we were supposed to do. I did, she did, she did. You did. So now you expect for her to sit here for two hours and answer these questions piece by piece. Now you're going to something else that you could have asked her about. What makes you think you're different? 
I asked you to do it. You we all had a consensus out. to do you it. You handed this out. I didn't know it came from her. You didn't tell me that when you handed it out. You were sitting right here when she handed it out. I did not see that she handed it well, to me. You handed if it you out. you have a problem with it, ask her about it. We're not going to stay here all night for you to go over and over and over the same things you go over all the time. The one who does all the conflict. Right. Give it to her. Board I think policy, that's fair to the rest of us. Board policy is a topic for discussion by the board. We have not you discussed say so. We have talked board about this policy, policy so many times. We have not discussed board policy other than specific things required by the law for two years. And again, that's not true. And that was that we were not true. it was on the schedule to be discussed at last year's board retreat. And, and it was canceled and we had a a picnic instead. We did not discuss board policy last year whatsoever. Okay, we have Two, in the last two meetings, two meetings, this is July, June, mm -hmm. May's meeting, that we had four board policy. When Ms. Andrews brought us the uh, updates, she said to us, read them at your leisure, and at the next, and if you have any questions, send them to me by way of email. And at the, by then, by the next meeting, I would have researched them and brought in the answer for you. This was, let me finish now, this was May's meeting. When we had the meeting in June, where that information was supposed to be presented, she had nothing, no questions to answer, just like she has tonight. Nothing to address. You said that you thought what she was referring to was Miss Fisher, since she was new, if she had questions, she made it clear, no, that book was for all of you to read at your leisure. So she gave us another month, which is today's meeting, where between last month and now, if you had any questions, like you have your three page, four pages there, should have been sent to her. She would have researched them, had the answer for us today, but you chose to bring them here for us to sit down and go through them, and now she is not able to answer some of your questions. So that means another meeting we'll have to have before we can pass this policy. We discussed at the, I believe it was the June 23rd meeting, she just that anything I just said. I disagree with what you said. Okay. Um, the well. statement was made that, I made the statement that I thought that we should have a two-day retreat to discuss board policy. And um, at that point in time, other people on the board felt that we should simply pass the board policy that night. And I did not think that was appropriate. I said that uh, we hadn't discussed board policy at all since Ms. Fisher had been on the board. And it was stated at that point in time, and you think that's a presidential way of handling it. Um, and it was stated then that if Ms. Fisher had any concerns that she could what, what month are you talking about? What meeting are you talking about? Because I'm going back to May's meeting. This is when we, the, the statement came up that we would read this policy manual at our leisure send Ms. Andrews any questions we had, and we would, uh, she would have the answer for us for the June meeting. So what meeting are you talking about? The reason I think this needs to be discussed, what and I will you? state it this over and over, I believe this is a discussion that the board should have about board policy. And when we have Is there a reason why you didn't send this to Ms. Andrews ahead of time? Because so I wanted she would have researched all it. of us to discuss this. I am less concerned at this point in time about Ms. Andrew. When I stated that I wanted a rental policy, she said I should come up with one. Say that again. When I stated that I wanted a rental policy, she rental? said that rental policy. Other districts what have that? rental policy. I've never heard I've never heard that come in when it comes to our policy before. So right. That's you stated because that we don't have them. Oh you no look. You said you made that statement that we should have. Where, where, was this in a board meeting you made the statement? Or mm -hmm. did you call her? I don't heard it. Uh, I don't. That was stated in the board meeting. And uh, it was part of a discussion that came out of a 
meeting I attended at the, Ms. Fisher and I attended actually, but I'm speaking for myself and not for her, at the Educational Service Center about board finances. And um, the discussion related to rental. So why would we have a rental? I don't understand what a rental policy is and why we would have a rental policy when we can have an official board voted policy that we're working with. What 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 would be the purpose of it? And what is a rental po policy and what would be the purpose? A rental policy concerns the amount that we can charge for the use of our facilities. Oh a rental. Oh it's not even it's a rental facility. board? Okay, she see making this more confusing. Yeah. You, you have a free report? I haven't heard of it. I, 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 I brought it to the board, and it was stated to me that I should come up with a, a Who stated it? If, if I may, if I may. I believe what I said was, if you have examples, please bring them. Because I did not understand the type of policy she was mm -hmm. requesting. That's what I'm, I'm familiar with the facilities use policy. And I simply asked that if she has an example of what she's talking about, I would like to see it. Because I didn't understand the specifics of what she was saying. I did not tell her to come up with it. Let me make the correction. You said that I gave you the policy on evaluation. Let's go you to the beginning. Yes. Ms. Andrew had asked if anyone had anything or any changes that needed to be made in the policy or any issues. That was what I gave to her. That was what she came back with. And she gave it out to us, gave it to me, and I passed it out just like you passed yours out a minute ago mm -hmm. at the appropriate time. If that was what you wanted to discuss, fine. But that had been given to her prior to, as we said that we would do, you are bringing these up tonight and you expect for somebody to go through with them and then you argue about each one. I expect the board to discuss concerns about board policy. Discussion yes. to you is different from discussion to everybody else. In response to your request for a policy, we did incorporate one in here. I had simply, it, it, it has simply slipped my mind, but we did. It's the community use of school facilities, and it is uh, now 9.35, and I'll provide a copy. I can send it by email to all of you. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. It was done. Okay. As I look at this policy for the evaluation of the superintendent, which was requested by our board president and provided by our attorney, as I now have clarification, it seems to me that when it discusses arbitrary, unfounded, or unsupported allegations that will not be considered, that all of our items on our um, on our, evalu our evaluation forms are subjective. And this document, and also board members must serve for a minimum of six months prior to offering information to superintendents or treasurers, depending on which one of these you're looking at, uh, performing through the evaluation process. It seems to me that this is the way that a majority of board members suppresses the opinion of uh, minority <coughs> members with it members with a minority opinion. And that therefore, um, I have a hard time seeing how this can be justified. Because it simply says that if three people think something and one or two think something else, if three or four people think something and one or two think something else, that the, the opinion can be disregarded. And I fail to see how that is in the interest of the community as a whole, or that it would stand in the court of law. I don't think that's what he's saying. I think he's saying that you don't have a basis for your opinion, no matter whether you want to agree or four or one or two. You don't have a basis for it, then it can't be used. Because it may be just a figment of your imagination, or it may be a lie. So if you don't have a basis for it, how can you say, someone told me that she ran down the street with her clothes on? You know, if you don't have a picture, somebody that the person told you can tell you something.
mean, just for you to come up with all those someone's that you do all the time makes it real. Look what they give Mrs. Carla and you down the street, you know, close on somebody with that picture. Of why, said, why, why would you even bring her name in it? Why, why do you pick her up? I said, up? Because, because, because she didn't use Mrs. Carla. I said, if someone said someone ran down the street with that. Wow. I think they'd take a picture. Well, maybe they wouldn't if it was you. Maybe they wouldn't. But the point is, you have to have some foundation for saying what you say about someone. You can't say, five people told me so-and-so. You have to have a little bit more to go with. And that's the way that evaluation started that day. I heard it. Somebody told me. Who told you? When did you hear it? You can't, oh, I can't tell you that, but I heard it. How could that be used in evaluating someone? That's not fair. This allows three board members to decide to disregard the evaluation of other board members. Why do you say three? Why not four? Three or four, but minimum of three. I'm just mm -hmm. saying anything that's a majority. So if there are three, if there are four, whatever. But if there's less than a majority, if there are one or two, either way, we're talking hypothetically, if there are less than a majority who feel one way and a majority who feels the other way, this allows the majority to vote not to take into consideration the opinions of the minority. But we live in a democracy where the majority mm -hmm. rules. The majority Eval rules, no matter what you do. And you evaluations, that away. evaluations have never been done with the majority deciding. How do you know what's ever been done? In my experience. Thank you. Well, when a minority is corrupt and opinionated and negative, minority is corrupt, opinionated, then in negative, then the majority has to do something about it to prevent that corruption. When a person, like I said before, um, this person has no credibility because this person in the past nominated a brand new person to be president of a board over an attorney that has been president and done a fantastic job. They nominate a brand new person with no high level education, no background, no experience to be president of this board. And without the three people not voting for this person, not supporting the nomination, this person would be president of a vote this board. The vote was done as is, without the three as people. is done by majority. And the nomination was made. And then made. you nominated this person to be vice president. And the nomination was made. And I knew then that you had no credibility. I knew then that you were corrupt. And I knew then. And the nomination was made because of my opinion of the functioning of the board. So you nominated a brand new person with no experience to be president of this board. Right? And yes. you did. Yes, I did. And, and I, I can't believe, forget that. And I fully believe that that was the decision that was most consistent with my evaluation of what happened. And your correctness. Okay. I, I'm and you may feel that that's I know. and I may feel you that other things that you, you just played that you dislike all authority. You dislike the superintendent, the president. You have displayed that. You have fought them all the way. For triviality, with a lot of triviality. And we feel like fools on that stage because of you. I, I've gotten comments say, oh, that, that, uh, that board is ghetto like, but they argue with, among themselves. It's embarrassing. You embarrass me. That's not the function I want to perform I as a board member. I certainly agree that yeah. the way a, the board functions is not, uh, is far from ideal. I, we're, in, we're in agreement on that. You know, it's pretty ridiculous that we have to go through this. We can have this problem. The trivia, all of a sudden, this is a big problem on this board. Every time we have a meeting, there's some sort of 
problem, some kind of sort of argument. Triviality is sort of trivial, too. That over something that's not even worth arguing. Right. It's, it's, it's just, just grown and grown and grown. And it's right. just insignificant into uh, it being a really living thing, as opposed to just something that everyone should really think about. I said to you last week, I get to the point the other day that I hate to come to board meetings because of too. the mess that happens on board meetings. We never had this before. No. But all of a sudden, this is starting to happen. It has festered up to a point, and now it's breaking up. I, and I you know why, and I know why. I and feel that there has been a problem uh, with Excuse me, I'm still talking. I was still talking. And I also said to you last week, you grew. You stopped cutting people off. Everybody can talk but you. Then when you start talking, you want everybody to fly. That's just plain old common sense and common courtesy. I hadn't you. finished. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank I, you. And you interrupt me as much as I interrupt you. Uh, and I apologize you. for interrupting you. Except there have apology. been times when I have misinterpreted Except her a pause. No, I haven't finished. I thought you got paused, and I thought you were done. Cut it. And there are you need help. You need help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if Madam President, I just I'm kindly responding to what my colleague Ms. Edwin Priest um, just said. I do want to say yes. yes sometimes. Yes. But I'm trying to think of the right way. Um, I, I do want to correct something that she said, um, which I will not explain at this time. I do have plenty of experience and convictions um, more than what you can so I would ask, I mean, I, I really want to think down in my feet and be better. I think high level, high level college, high level education. I, I have, have credentials. credentials. Yeah. I do have credentials and I have experience. Okay. And I've been sitting here being very respectful. So, um, you know, I don't feel respected at that point. But I do understand you probably don't have that much information. No, I don't. But I know you should decline. When you were nominated for president of this board, you should have declined. Because you knew you weren't. You always are saying, I'm new, I don't understand. Whatever. You say that now. I'm new, I'm still new. How could you be president of this board with no experience? No. <coughs> you should have declined. That's what I think <coughs> did not decline. You should say, I decline the nomination as president of this board. And then she nominated you for vice president after that. And you still didn't decline. Because the two of you got together on this. I think you both got together. Let's, let's, let's make you president over the attorney here, an attorney, who has experience, has board experience, and education. Uh,